the Sports Renegades podcast on SportstownChicago.com. Welcome into the Sports Renegades here on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Stuffridge. And I'm Ryan Risky. And uh, today on the show, we're going to start off talking about the Cubs as uh, they will visit the White House on Monday. That's pretty exciting. And they will also uh, be, I guess almost all of them, will be at the Cubs convention this weekend. It'll probably be the most highly anticipated Cubs convention. Uh, It'll probably be really crazy, um, you know, all the festivities and stuff that's going on. And it also kind of turns the page to a new chapter to 2017. It it really does. And as we all saw, Chris Bryant got married uh, not that long ago. So congratulations to him. Cubs convention's coming up. I believe it starts tomorrow night. Yeah, it, st- it starts tomorrow night and then Saturday. And, then and usually at Cubs Con, one thing that I really like, I, I went once in 2008. I know you've been there a few times. A couple times. One of uh, my, my favorite things that I love that usually comes out of Cubs uh, convention is that they release the promotional schedule. Yeah, yeah, they do. And I'm getting really excited to see what kind of good, good stuff they got this year. I'm sure there'll be a lot of championship type uh, memorabilia. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be seeing things like Ben Zobrist World Series MVP bobblehead, oh, Chris Bryant MVP bobblehead, Anthony Rizzo Gold Glove Award bobblehead. You know, things like that, and uh, replica rings. Uh, so I mean, I'm really excited to see what kind of cool stuff they got because I'm sure they're going to have a lot of good stuff, you know, to commemorate the first championship in 108 years. Yeah, there, there's going to be a lot of uh, neat stuff, that's for sure, and it'll be uh, just an ex- exciting time, uh, you know, to to reflect on the past season, the championship season, and then to look forward to 2017, and uh, yeah, it, it'll just be uh, pretty exciting. And then uh, right after that, on Monday, they go and visit the White House, so that's always exciting too. Right, and and I read that they uh, actually did n- wanted to go before Obama left office. They did not want to be the first team to go while Trump was in office. <laughs> I, I I'm assuming that probably has something to do with it, but also uh, you know Obama's from Chicago, uh, so so uh, you know it kind of makes sense to to make sure that you visit him. You know, while it, it kind of means more to him than it would to Trump, I guess. Right, and Dexter <laughs> Fowler is on the guest list, which is a good thing. That's good, yeah. Uh, that's very good. I- I'm more excited. I think uh, the the home opener at Wrigley Field is going to be crazy. They're going to get their rings. They're going to. Uh, they're getting their rings uh, the right. second the second game. They're, the the second, second game against the Dodgers. Second game, yeah. whatever. But uh, it, it, you know they're going to be lifting a championship banner. At, at I don't know where it's going to go, but they're going to have some sort of thing that they'll unveil. At Wrigley Field, I'm assuming. So that'll be exciting, too. Uh, I, I would really like to try to go to one of those games because that, that would be exciting. Yeah, yeah. And I know uh, tickets for a home opener are, like, <laughs> I, I can't unbelievable. Imagine. <laughs> I, I, I mean, like that's almost as expensive as a playoff game. Yeah, I If not more so. than the NLDS. It, it's crazy. And even the, the second game where they're going to get their rings, that game is ridiculous for an April game. I think, you know, cheapest tickets for that one are going in the $90 range. Yeah, what you have to do is you have to, uh, you know, wait for the Cubs single uh, game tickets to go on sale on Cubs.com and get and get really lucky to at least get it at phase value. Right, because, you know, these are all season ticket holders putting their uh, tickets up for sale. Yeah, for and, sure. And I mean, obviously, there's a there's select amount. I believe the, it's a little over half the stadium is season tickets. Yeah, something like that. Along, I know you were explaining it to me a while ago. Yeah, and then they have another hundred and ten thousand on the waiting list. <laughs> yeah, imagine how much that that waiting list is going to go up now. Uh, there, there's going to be more and more people on that waiting list. That's for sure. Right, right, and I mean, it, it's going to be an exciting opening week. And uh, another thing, when you bring up kind of the season ticket holders, there are a yeah. few fans that got their tickets revoked. Yes, I, I heard about that. It 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 has to do with uh, sort of how many tickets that they didn't use and how many that they sold actually during uh, the season. Um, I, I I don't know. I, do you, do you agree with that move that they're they're trying to get more you know true fans that are actually going to games season ticket opportunities? It, see, me being a season ticket holder, I think I have an interesting perspective on it. I've yeah. seen some people on Twitter saying, "Oh, if you're not going to go to all the games, you you should have your tickets taken away." And the thing is, like that's a lot. Eighty one games is a lot of games to go to. Right. You have to sell some. That's why a lot of. I mean, another thing, it's a lot of games. It's a lot of money. That's why a lot of people partner up. 
for tickets. Like, like I partner up, uh, we partner up with uh, the company my dad works for, which we're fortunate about that. And I mean, it, it's even then. I mean, we still keep keep you know thirty, thirty five games. That's still that's right. a lot of games. Oh yeah. I mean that that is a lot of games, and I you know we didn't go and like you know like some people just went and sold all their playoff tickets to try to make a profit. You know yeah. we, we didn't go and do that. No, I, I, um, which I, I mean, wouldn't necessarily. As you saw, the Tribune wrote an article about a guy in San Diego who sold every playoff game and couldn't and was complaining that his tickets got revoked. Right, I, I, but playoffs, like I kind of understand that. See, in the playoffs, you should be going. I mean, there's some games you can't go to, or you want to yeah. maybe sell one just to get a little money back to help pay for next year's tickets and all. That except I mean, like if you don't if you're a season ticket holder and you don't live in the Chicagoland area, you kind of shouldn't really have tickets. Like because when I got my tickets and they pulled my name out of a lottery, they said that they had put a bunch of names in the Chicagoland area just into a raffle and pulled out some names because they want people in the Chicagoland area that are going to go to the games. That makes sense. You know, where yeah. that guy in San Diego, he can't go to any games. <laughs> Right, and I I think I heard it was something like if you ended up selling like over I mean it was a lot like over seventy or eighty percent of your tickets, if those kind of went unused by yourself and you sold them, then you were kind of then you know you you, you might get your tickets revoked. Right, I mean, and you, and in reality, you do have to sell some, and they do understand that you need to get some money back sure. in order to edit now play, pay for playoff tickets or get ready for next year's tickets. I mean, because it, it is a lot. Like this year, since they raised ticket prices, my tickets are now about twelve thousand for the two seats. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and I mean, I have people complaining like, "Oh, you should be going to every game." No, no, you really shouldn't. No, not not especially, every game. Especially, well, when, I mean, and and if you're going, you know, if you're using your like thirty games or whatever it is, uh, you know, you pretty much get your fill for the year then. Right. I mean. I mean, and that that's a lot of games. Like, I mean, it's like you know. They could be playing, like, six home games in a row. That's six days in a row. You have to make an awful drive down to Wrigley Field. <laughs> I mean, and, yep. then, and, you know, and you're probably not getting home till 11 or 12. Right. I mean, it, it's long nights. I mean, it's not like, you know, the Blackhawks or the Bulls where they might have a couple home games a week. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, it's more in a row, certainly. And, you know, then you got a night game and then a day game the next day, too, right. sometimes. And, and, I mean, I get where some people are coming from that you shouldn't be allowed to just have the tickets to make a profit off of. Right. And, I mean, I totally get that because I read that in playoff prices were inflated 697%. That's a lot. I mean, the World Series tickets, you know, you're paying a few thousand dollars to get in, get in except that, you know, that's the that's the price of admission, you know, to see the Cubs in the World Series. Yeah, that that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's a lot of money. I mean, if you want to go to a playoff game, don't go in the World Series. <laughs> that, that that's the thing, right there. I mean, and some people get lucky and win the lottery. Except you, you know, you sh- you shouldn't be like going and selling every playoff game because those are tickets that people want. And I know, I know some teams actually have like a policy that you're not allowed to sell, you know, resell playoff tickets. Right, right. Because I mean, I totally get that because there's a lot of people that would love to have those tickets and. You know, it'd be unfair if someone's just, you know, making a profit off of them. Like, we we actually had uh, bought tickets for Game 5 of the, NL, of the NLDS. Yeah. And then we were looking. That guy had every single playoff game up for sale. <laughs> every single playoff game that could have been played, he had up for sale. NLCS, NLDS, yeah, World I, Series. It, that, it, it just doesn't seem right. You know, it's fine. You know, you sell, one, you sell a couple, maybe one every round, you know. I mean, I totally get that, except, I mean, you, people want those tickets. People shouldn't be allowed to make a fortune off of them. Right. You know, I mean, like, I know one of the, obviously, one of the big benefits of having Cubs season tickets is the ability to get playoff tickets at face value. Yeah. Although I, I expect tickets to be, the prices to be raised quite a bit this year after seeing what they were uh, going for on oh, the yeah, secondary they'll be, market. They'll be going up. Everything will be going up just a little bit, and uh, that, you know, kind of sucks, but that's the price you pay for winning. I'd much rather have the Cubs win. Right, and as we saw, so, tickets went up an average of 19% this year. Mm-hmm. My tickets only went, my seats only went up 14.5%. <laughs> Some some sections were going Still up. A lot. Yeah, some were going sections were going up close to thirty eight percent. Yeah, that, that's it's a crazy. lot. Uh, and then they obviously added the new diamond, which uh, 
to their uh, scheduled Diamond games, which is home opener, uh, obviously, the Saturday Cardinal game in July and a Saturday Yankee game uh, in early May. That's right. The the Yankees are back in town. Every three years they, they come back to town, don't they? So, the, yeah, those will be highly touted, obviously. Um, of course, in other news, uh, um, in other Cubs news, a couple days ago it, it was announced that Jim Deshays and Len Casper will be the announcers through 2019, so they got uh, you know three year extension or and well deserved contract extensions. I was wondering for sure, for sure when that would be announced because Casper in 2012 signed the four year agreement to go through the end of the 2016 season. Yeah, it, it's uh, you know the, they are really good, and and we know Len Casper's good. He's been here since like 2005, so I I, I mean he's been really good uh, throughout his whole time here. And Jim Deshays is a pretty darn good um, announcer himself. And then the radio crew, too, is pretty good. So, I mean, we kind of lucked out with our The Cubs have the best radio crew. crew. I mean, Pat Hughes. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, and uh, and Ron Coomer is um, it, um, is also good. Mark Rohde's good. So, yeah, it, it's just uh, it's really good because there are some teams where it, it's just uh, it's pretty awful. Just take a look at the south side. It's pretty awful broadcasts. So. Yeah, I mean, the one thing, though, you have to give to Hawk is he is passionate about that. Team. Oh, yeah. He I, I wasn't really to... talking about TV yeah. necessarily, but yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I, I well, agree. Yeah, I mean, Hawk, he is one of the most passionate announcers you'll find. He just wants the White Sox to win. And yep. sometimes his and emotions, that's not going to happen for a while. <laughs> sometimes his emotions get the best of him just because he, he's so passionate about that team. He just bleeds bleeds the White Sox colors. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. He, you know, and I know there's a lot of does. people that are always complaining about him. He has one of the most notable home run calls around. Yeah, yeah, he does. He he's actually led a pretty interesting life. Uh, story when you go back to like his baseball days and stuff, right? And especially when he was the GM, and then he fired Tony Larusa, and Jerry Reinsdorf said Hawk was the only one dumb enough to fire Tony Larusa. Yeah, that's a pretty bad move. But there, you know, there, there's a reason why you kind of go from uh, the GM and then into the uh, into the broadcast booth. It kind of suited him better. Yeah, I, I mean he's. Uh, passion or whatever, but you know, obviously the Sox broadcast doesn't compare it to the Cubs broadcast, which has just been pretty good ever since they've gotten these guys together. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's been really exciting. So, so, so that's exciting that they'll be here through 2019 at, at least. And uh, Todd Hollinsworth, I know, took a uh, color commentator job in uh, with the Miami Marlins, so he'll actually be gone from pre and post game on on a. Uh, Comcast Sportsnet. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. He he belongs in the booth, though. He's one of the best analysts around. I'm yeah, sure, he's really good. I'm sure CSN will find another good analyst to pair with David Kaplan for pre and post games. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm sure they they will. It'll be interesting to see who. Uh, I don't know. Who, maybe who does David that. Ross might be available. <laughs> that's right. David Ross might be available. Um, Unless he join, he takes a job in the Cubs front office. I, I'm assuming he'll take a year off to figure out what he wants to do, and then he'll probably do something like that where he'll either be working in the Cubs front office or in a broadcast booth somewhere or something like that. And not necessarily with the Cubs, but it would be nice if it was with the Cubs. Um, so, so hopefully that's the case. Uh, we're going to take a break, and we'll come back. We're going to uh, talk about the NFL, the playoff matchups. Uh, we'll, the Chargers moving to Los the Angeles. The Chargers moving to L.A., which seems like a very... Uh, not very smart move. Uh, it wasn't uh, well received. No, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about the NFL and all that stuff next. Sports Renegades, SportsTownChicago.com. The Sports Renegades podcast on SportsTownChicago.com.